cooking or How's it going everyone? Good. Welcome back. Um, I turned off the voice after this. I forgot to turn off the microphone. But we're going to go through the weapons in Cold War and just general thoughts on, you know, how they were, how what I thought of them. So we're going to start off here with essentially the M4. Um it's very typical for an M4. It's very accurate. It's um, good fire rate. This was the go-to AR in the beta. There were a couple people using the Galil, but for the most part, this was the uh, the go-to. Um, I was using I can't remember what the perk is called that allows you to use an unlimited amount, or you get to use full attachments on your gun. There's no restriction, but I was running that on all of them. So next up was the AK-47. This was kind of the worst one, in my opinion. Um, I didn't enjoy the AK. It does do good-ish damage, but it's not like Modern Warfare style damage. It is a very accurate assault rifle, which um, it, that, that is a good thing. It is accurate. I'm not accurate, but it is an accurate gun and it does relatively good damage. I still think the M4 was slightly better. I think if this thing shot a slightly slower but had a you know a little bit more uh, strength to it I'd like it a little bit more but if it, it just doesn't have the uh, stopping power I would expect from 762 it just it, it doesn't seem like it is hitting nearly hard enough sometimes sometimes it feels great other times it feels like I'm I'm just throwing tissue paper at them but it with, with everything being said, it's accurate in this game, so it's not, like, hard to control or anything. And that's just <clears throat> the way it's built in this game. Um, if I had to, like, give a score system, I think the M4 would be, like, a, a 9 out of 10 from the beta, like a 9.5. I don't want to give anything a 10, necessarily. This thing I'd give about a 7. <clears throat> the Galil, I'm going to give, like, another 9. It was super good. And as you can see, here it is. Sorry about my sore throat. <clears throat> as you can see, basically none of the weapons have recoil, which they're going back to the original Call of Duties where there was a lot less recoil. There's no mounting, and I'm very glad there is no mounting. I was never a fan of it, so I'm kind of glad it's gone, honestly. Um, but this thing is also very accurate, very strong. Um, it was one of my favorite assault rifles. I, I'm a huge fan of the AK, and I love AR platforms, but this one felt really, really solid, and I'm, you know, just trying to stay away from always saying the M4, the M4 is the best. Um, this thing, this thing was very, very solid. It, it wasn't as good as the M4 necessarily, I, I don't know, sometimes it felt as good as the M4. I, I'll, I'll give it a 9 out of 10 as well, because this thing felt pretty good. Now, on to the, I think it was the QBZ, um, I didn't write this down, but this is kind of just, you know, off the top of my head. The QBZ was an interesting gun, it was pretty accurate, it did have some recoil if you put the wrong attachments on it, but once you figure out which attachments, attachments to put on, it was another laser beam. Um, the big thing with it is sometimes, I'm not sure where it really fits. Its fire rate just seems okay, and the damage was okay. Um, on to SMGs, because there were only four assault rifles. First up was the MP5. This thing's a monster. Um, if you played Modern Warfare, it's basically the same thing. It's very accurate, it is very mobile, and it does very good damage. And you can just kind of beam people from everywhere. What I saw in the beta was people just beaming people from all over the place. So it is a very, very strong weapon. I think a lot of people are going to be really drawn to this, or the AK-74U, personally. The MP5, where I think it... I can't think of anywhere that it struggled. I saw people killing people from basically anywhere and everywhere. Um, so I can't really think of any weak points currently with the MP5. And it does have, like, a drum magazine. It has a drum with a uh, sleight of hand, stuff like that. Its attachments are good, but you don't need a whole lot of them. We're up to... Milano here, which got nerfed after the first week, so I'm not really sure how good it used to be. It was relatively good. It wasn't um, MP5 levels, but it was it, it, it was a good gun. You got a 45 round mag, um, reasonably slower fire rate, but it does some goodish damage. 
It's kind of like uh, the Uzi in Modern Warfare. It's got good damage, it has good re uh, good recoil patterns, as in the fact that there is none. Um, and it's just an all-around, you know, solid weapon. Now, AK-74U, personally my favorite currently. The AK-74U feels almost like it does more damage than the AK itself. Now, normally the AK-74U is in a 5.45, I believe is what it was. It's a smaller caliber than the 7.62, but this thing just demolishes. It's like an MP5 on crack. And it's just so good. It was just so good. And then we get on to this last one, which was actually a burst SMG. Um, I've never loved burst SMGs. This thing packs a punch, and it's obviously very accurate because it's a burst. Um, I'm not a huge fan of burst SMGs, but this one was relatively good. You can shoot it pretty quickly. Uh, I think that it, it, it would do really well with a uh, fire rate attachment, S something similar to like what the M16 had where you could increase its fire rate. I think that this thing would... Um, do really well with something like that if you could just increase it slightly. But all all things considered, this thing does put out quite a punch. But as you can see there, the burst is what's kind of slowing it down in terms of uh, in terms of damage. If this thing was full auto, oh my god, it would be insane. It'd be so freaking strong. But it is a good gun still. So now we're going on to LMGs. We got the Stoner Burst, which is, again, very accurate like most of the weapons in the game. Um, it's a pretty good fire rate, uh, pretty good damage as well. You can kind of just mount up and... And I was trying to use the same sights relatively for all of my tests on the, on the weapons. Um, headshot multipliers are much higher in this game. If you get headshots, obviously you get more damage. The stoner really shined in some places. We're on the RPD now, one of my favorite LMGs in the series. I don't know what it is about this gun, but I absolutely love it. Um, in this game, it is super accurate. It doesn't hit quite as hard as I originally thought it was going to. I thought we were going to see a Modern Warfare 2 style RPD that just absolutely shreds but has some recoil. This thing can have recoil, I'm not saying it can't. I did make one that was basically running around with an SMG, and that had a lot of recoil, but once I got used to it, I could pull it down. But like I said, these are running all the same attachments to make the test fair. So I do think that it is it is strong. Now back to the stoner though. The stoner is just crazy. It's crazy good. The fire rate really keeps up, and I, I think that... If you compare the RPD and the stoner, the stoner has less recoil. You still get close to the same amount of damage. There could be like a, a point difference of maybe one where, you know, an extra shot is the deciding factor. But it doesn't really make too big of a difference in my opinion. So next category is going to be the marksman rifles. They call them tactical rifles here. I mean, look at this thing, the glue, yeah. Alright. First up was the Type 60... Oh crap, I thought I had it. 68, I think is what it was. I can't remember now. It is a semi-automatic fire, you know, as fast as you really want to. This thing wasn't great in close quarters. It could be used, but at medium to long range, it... I mean, it just plinks. It, it just... It's super accurate. You get 25 rounds in the normal mag. It's very, very solid. Um, obviously, what you'll be able to see here is that um, at distances, the damage doesn't really carry all too well. As you can see, it's probably about three shots. Um, but even then, I mean, it's a very solid weapon. That's why I said mid-range, it's very good. S dealing with snipers, snipers fucking hate this thing, getting just plinked by it. It is a very, very good rifle in my opinion. I saw a lot of people doing some really good plays with it. Um, but like I said, a lot of people sit back with it. So it is still a very good gun in my opinion. All right, so the other gun in this category, the M16 that we'll be getting to in a sec, 
maybe a little bit better than this one, if we're going to be honest. But this thing, I had so much fun with. I mean, you can see the range is pretty good. Sometimes I had, like, what I felt were, like, phantom bullets. Bullets not connecting even though they were right on target. Um, that was mainly happening at long distances, though. Because it was a three-shot, like I said, but some of them just didn't seem to three-shot. So, the M16 is very similar to the battle rifle in Halo. Um, Halo 3 and stuff like that. As you can see, it doesn't really have recoil. So you can kind of just shoot from anywhere and everywhere. I made a video on the M16, so you can check that out if you want to know more about it. But it is a very strong weapon. Now we're on to some snipers. First up is the Pellington. It is a one-shot kill to the head and the chest. Not the shoulders, it has to be the chest. Or the head. Um, it is a very fast ADS sniper, which has made it, you know, a big deal for quickscopers. Um, it... It still remains to be seen whether or not this thing is going to end up being really good or if it's just going to end up being decent. So we'll find out when the game releases and how things are balanced. So now we're up to, um, I think they call this the Tundra L96 basically. Um, this thing hits like a truck. It is a one, it's your typical one shot range, shoulders, chest, and head. Um, it's basically the big brother of the Pellington, so it does have slightly lower aim down sight speed, but you don't notice it too much. You can still quick scope with this, but you'll still lose in some gunfights against um, a shotgun, an MP5, some stuff like that. But the damage is definitely worth it. I mean, you can hit stomach shot sometimes, and this thing a one shot. So I definitely think it's it's a good sniper rifle in terms of quick scoping, um, sniping in general. So we're going to go over to some secondaries. First up is the 1911. It's your typical 1911. Does very good damage. Um, not a whole lot to say there. Pump shotgun here. Does not have the range you would think it does. But if you are in its kill range, it can just one-tap you, as you saw there. Um, and not a lot of people were using this in the beta. A lot of people were using the spaz, which I'll get to in a sec. The Rafika here... Um, I have mixed feelings on. Sometimes it felt like you could kill people quickly, and then other times it felt like it took a million bullets. Now, on the opposite side of that, the Magnum feels great. It's a two-shot, one to the head. Its hip fire is very good. Now we're on to the Spaz-12. The Spaz-12 is a semi-automatic, and it absolutely decimates in this game mode. And that's all of the weapons. We have the rocket launchers but i don't really think we need to go over those so i hope you guys uh had some fun with those let me know what your favorite weapon was down below i'll see you guys later